God help us. Good morning. Hope everybody had a good weekend and you remembered to give hugs to your moms and tell them Happy Mother's Day and how special they are. So we're starting our Monday though, so we need to do our pledges. Stand up, right hands over your hearts. Ready and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so let's go ahead and say the pledge to the Bible. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. pledge to our Christian flag. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Here we go. Bow your heads with me. We're going to pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. We pray your blessing upon it. Bless especially right now, Lord, the study of your word as we take a look at the Bible and we see what God has to say to us this morning and just open our hearts and minds to hear your Holy Spirit speak to us. We love you, Lord. We place this day into your hands. And we ask these things in your name, name Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our story is John the Baptist. But before we do that, we are going to go over our Bible verse. So we're going to show this to all of you guys. We're not going to stand there in front of you so you can see the words. So it's the whole Ephesians 6 this time, 10 through 17. All right, so you guys ready? Let's do it with us. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Forgot the. Then, after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. 
in, in addition, addition to, to all of these, hold up, up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 17. All right, yes, it's a long one, guys. So, wow. but you know what? You have two weeks on this one. Two yeah. weeks. All right, don't have a worship song today for you because it was such a long verse. I didn't do a worship song, so you guys can just kind of worship at home and everything. So, we're going to get into our story today. It is in Matthew 11 7 through 13 and 14 3 through 12. This story, none of us really even kind of like this story, but it's in the Bible. God put it in there because it's really sad. Yeah. And it's wicked. Yeah, it's wicked too. But that's okay. It's part of our curriculum, so we're going to talk about it. So you guys all remember John the Baptist, right? He was the cousin of Jesus. We know that John went out and was um, telling everybody about the Lord. He was baptizing. He baptized Jesus um, to sh for an example for us. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about the end of his life. On earth. Yes, on earth. Right. So we need to first ask ourselves, who was John? Which we just talked about. And he, we know he was the cousin of Jesus. And you know what Jesus said about him? That he was the greatest man born in the world. Wow, what a compliment. Mm -hmm. Coming from Jesus, too. Yeah. And amazing. John, he preached about um, moral issues. He th preached about things that were right and good. And he did not always make people happy what he told them. So people would look and he'd say, you know, Mrs. East, I really don't think that you should be taking that candy bar. But I want it. But, you know, it just wouldn't be a very good thing. Do you think she's happy that I told her she shouldn't take that candy That's bar? That's it. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> so he would say things that just people didn't want to hear. And you know what? He said that to a king. Mm. And remember, kings can say, off with their heads, right? Yeah, in this case, mm -hmm. definitely. <laughs> but the king didn't do it. But he, I mean, he did, but he didn't. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was kind of tricked into it. As John was preaching, he told Herod that he had made a bad decision when he decided to marry his brother's wife, Herodias. John also told Herod of the evil things he had done. Herod, though, was afraid to kill him. Because John, all the people believe that he was a prophet. So he says, oh, I can't, I can't go against him. I, I can't do that because the people will be really, really mad at me. I think he was a little superstitious, too. I, yeah. I think he was afraid, so too. So it was, it was not about a relationship with God, but just uh, the weird God thing. Like, oh, God will be mad at me. He'll make something bad happen. Uh, and, you know, God does that. Think of those plagues, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So then we have... No, it's the bottom oh, one. Herodias was very angry about what John had said. And Herodias, Herod's wife, said, you know what? You need to kill him. You need to get rid of him. We don't want to listen to him anymore because he, he's saying things that we don't like. Right. Then we had Herod's birthday was coming up. There was going to be a big celebration. Well, since um, Herod was not listening to what his wife said, she came up with a plan with her and her daughter, Salome. They had a plan. A wicked one at that. <laughs> Salome would go and dance before Herod, and then 
they kind of knew that Herod would like the dancing and stuff and probably offer her something. So they made this plan of what they were going to do when she did go and dance. And she danced in front of Herod. And then all the people that were around, she did her little whatever she did. Fancy dance. <laughs> Fancy dancing. And then he liked it so much that he even offered her things. Oh, you just made me so happy. Oh, you just pleased me so much. You can have half of my kingdom. You can have gold. You can have jewels. You can have cattle. You can have horses. I think having part of somebody's kingdom would be a really good thing to choose, right? But remember, she had a plan with her mom. So let's find out. Do you know what she asked for? You guys think of it? This is, this is, this is the bad part. Yes, this, this is, is sick. Yeah. This, this is, is the, This is the wicked part. I think you have to realize she could have had half of his whole kingdom, yeah. up to half of she his whole kingdom. She could have had gold and jewels. Yeah. So it just goes to show you how wicked that mother was that she inscripted her daughter to do this intentionally. And it shows that like sin can entrap other people around you oh, when yeah. you commit a sin and you can bring other people into that sin too. So yeah. if you guys said that she asked for John the Baptist's head, you're right. Yeah. Mm, you are correct. Salome said, give me the head of John the Baptist on a charger or on a platter. Oh, terrible. There's the platter up there. <laughs> I didn't put the head on it, though. That's a good thing. <laughs> Herod must have been shocked that a young girl would ask for such a thing. But remember, he offered this in front of everybody. And because he was so proud of himself, right, he, had, he was prideful. He said, well, I can't go back on what I said, so go get John and take off his head. Herod commanded the head of John the Baptist to be given to Salome, and she took it for, for her mother. See, it had nothing to do with Salome. She did this for her mom. Yeah. What a wicked thing to do to the one who preached the coming of Jesus. And you know what? Jesus heard about this. John's followers, his disciples, his followers, they went and they buried him and they let Jesus know. And then Jesus went and he took a boat and he went across the Sea of Galilee and there he sat all by himself. I wouldn't imagine he might even been crying, right? It Me was being his cousin. Sad. And he loved him. Remember, what did he say? He was the greatest man. Too. I think it's important. This is an important part. We need to realize, though, that sometimes, just like now, they think the word of God will be stopped by closing the church. That doesn't stop by doing something. It does not stop the word of God. God continues. That word of God continues to go out. And even though they thought they might. It does it for good. Yeah. Might shut him up and no one in it. That would be the end of it. But it wasn't. Because I think if I write later on, Herod asked to see Jesus and he doesn't respond. Right. He won't say a word to Herod. Yes. And I think Jesus, the human part of him, was like, I, there's no hope for you. I have no <laughs> desire to even communicate with you. Yeah. Especially so. when John had never done anything really wrong. Right. Right. Nothing. No. So, all right. So, we have, is there one more on this one? There we go. We have some questions. You are going to pull out your Bible page. We're going to help you with the first page, and then you will do the other side on your own. So on page 189, we have questions. So I'm going to ask you guys. Oh, we have our sticks again here. Oh, okay. 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 Are, here we, we go. are you guys ready to uh, answer? I'm ready. Ready. We're ready. Okay. Okay. So John told people to be baptized and then to repent of their sins. Hmm. Okay, Mrs. East. Uh, I think the answer is true. Because they did need to be baptized. He wanted them to be baptized. He was John the Baptist. Right. And they did need to repent of their sins. Because they had to they had to turn around and walk, walk the away. other way. So, you write true. Do you have another idea well, on that I, one? I think that it could be false. Because one of the things it says is John told the people to be baptized and then to repent of their sin. So we're not baptized first. We actually need to repent right. of our sin what was I and thinking? then be baptized. So as we were discussing this, 
we came up with it could be false. It could be both. So if you put true, you, you're right. And if you put false, you're right. It depends on how you looked at that question. Right. So that's a kind of tricky one. So true or false is correct. All right, number two. Some people thought John was Elijah who had come back to life. Was he, was he an, uh, an old person that lived a long, long time ago? No. That's kind of weird. That's and kind of weird. Do people really come back to life? Mm, no. Not on earth. Not unless Jesus mm -hmm. heals them. Yeah, we right. can only say that's only of Jesus because we do have Lazarus. The, we do have some miracles, but that was with, only because of Jesus. Yep. Right. All right, so if you put, would we say the word true? You're correct. All right, Mrs. Bachelier. Uh-oh. It says, John said that he could baptize with the Holy Spirit. John could baptize with a, a mm. oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, no. No? Mm, do you no. agree? I, yeah, because the Holy Spirit was coming later. Right. And Pentecost. 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 Book of Pentecost. Acts. Book of Acts. Go to Remember, the book of Acts. Remember, Jesus was the Holy Spirit too, though, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. So came down on him, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yep. So, so that wasn't John's um That wasn't vocation. John's thing. Yeah, it wasn't his <laughs> calling. Yeah. All right. Okay, so that one was a little bit of a tricky one, too. So John asked Jesus, oh, but you'll be able to get this one. John asked Jesus if he could baptize him. Did John ask Jesus? I, I got that one. I got that one. Yep. Go for it. Uh, John asked Jesus to baptize. Uh, sorry, sorry, let me read it again. It says, John, John asked, asked Jesus, Jesus if he could baptize. baptize. Oh, no. Nope. John did not want to baptize Jesus because he didn't feel he was worthy, worthy. of that. Yeah. We talked about that one. He said, oh, but not me. You're the, you're the better person, right? Oh, false. So, Mrs. East, Herod and John put into, I'm sorry, Herod had John put into prison for saying Herod was wrong to marry his brother's wife. Yes. Yep. There's no wife sharing. And I remember that's where the whole thing started. Yes. There. Yes. The daughter of Herodias asked to have John's head. Ooh, did, was she going to give him on that silver platter? Wow. This is such this a sus. Is, every that time I it. hear it, it just makes me more Okay, so if you put true, like be sick. you're correct. Jesus was glad <sighs> to hear that John had been killed. Was Jesus God glad? Oh, did no. he like and said, oh, yay, John's dead, yay. I don't no. think so. Remember, no, that was he went family. across the Sea of Galilee, and he was all alone. I imagine he oh. wept. He wept and prayed, yep, prayed talked and, to his yeah. dad. And then Jesus said that John was the greatest man born. I think I mentioned that a couple times, so I'm sure you yeah. guys wrote true it's on in that the one. It is true. All right, so guys, that's going to end our lesson for today. You are going to do the back of this page, page 190, on your own. Huh. Remember something about being fishers of men. Bye. Oh.